This week I'm hiding. I'm hiding because my book is out and I'm frightened to read any of the reviews. But I'm also hiding because this week's coffee is called Escondida, which means hidden in Spanish. My name is Steve Layton, and I travel the world finding amazing and delicious coffee for you to drink at home. Some make coffee difficult to understand and complicated, but here it's my job to make it easy and fun and tell you what's in my mug. So Finca Escondida is close to Lake Apan Apanas, uh, near the town of Ginotega. And as I said earlier, the translation from Spanish to English of Escondida is hidden. Uh, and that's because the farm is hidden from the road um, by forest, by trees, um, which makes it kind of blend into the side of the mountain. It's a super young farm. Uh, first trees were planted in 2006. Um, and Escondida was planted with specific plots and specific varietals in mind to suit the microclimate, um, resulting in looking at things like sunlight, soil quality, sun exposure, temperature. Um, and this is one of the, the huge upsides of being able to start with a new farm, is you can really pick out what, what suits. Um, the varietal is Katayi, uh, which you don't see so much in specialty coffee. Um, and this varietal was kind of picked out because it was thought it would do the very best with that soil quality, sun exposure, temperature ranges, weather conditions uh, in this particular spot on the farm. Um, given the farm's quite exposed on the side of the mountain, it's particularly good for that too. Um, some of the downsides of starting with a brand new farm can be that the cup quality um, can take a little while to build as the profile develops. Um, and having the right facilities, you know, brand new mill, getting people who know how to use the mill, brand new pickers, getting people to learn how to pick the exact coffees that you want them to. Um, and not to mention it takes quite a while for a farm to yield its full potential. But this farm, like, hit the whole group of requirements that you need. So uh, the first harvest ever from the farm was used by the uh, UK Barista Champion in 2009, who then went on to win the World Championships in Atlanta in the, uh, 2009 as well with this coffee. Now, why did it do all of those things? Well, the farm has a group of uh, pickers that they can use from a neighboring farm to come and help with the picking. All of the people that run the mill also run San Jose, which is another farm that we've worked with. Um, so they have experience of running the mill. And the Maresh family who own the farm have got so much experience of processing, drying, uh, dry milling. They just meant this farm had a head start on everybody else. My bit and your favorite bit, snozzer in the bowl. Now, why do we do aromas? Um, I think it's important to think about what is happening with when you grind coffee is you're increasing the surface area so when the water hits it you can extract some things out but as you grind it because you increase that surface area you get a more intense aroma come off it and it gives you a precursor of what's to come in the cup um, it's by no means replacing drinking but the smell of coffee is so amazing why wouldn't you stick your snozzer in a bowl so um, we've got the escondida here and the first thing I can tell from this aroma, and I want you to do this at home as well, so if you're watching the video and you've got the coffee, go and grind a little bit of it. Get your nose in there. And it smells sweet. You just smell the sweetness. Um, you know, I, I don't know what sweetness, but you know, if you smell like candy floss in the, the, when you're walking around a fun fair and you get that sweet smell coming off the candy floss, it smells a little bit like that. But you also can smell that there's some acidity in there. So like, think about, couldn't open a green apple and it kind of squirting everywhere. Kind of reminds me a little bit of that. And it's such an aromatic coffee and a lot of the aromatics are coming because it's just so well processed. Something that the Maresh family do super well. So this week we're gonna talk about Katayi. Um, and this is a dwarf varietal that doesn't grow very high. Um, so very kind of dwarf-like and it's its most obvious uh, distinguisher. Selected by the Instituto of Agronomica in 1950s and 1960s, now accounts for around about 50% of the Bra uh, Brazilian coffee and is widely used in Central America. Catay is a high yielding plant and that's why they've planted so much of it and it's a cross between Mundo Novo and Yelacatura. The fruit doesn't fall off the branches easily, so when there's strong winds or rain, it helps. Um, and doesn't need quite so much windbreaker coverage. Um, Cate is quite susceptible to pest and disease, um, 
When I say quite central, probably like a moderate level. But the reason that it's on Escondida is because it's so exposed on the mountain side from the winds from the lake, it means that the fruit sticks to the plant a little better. So welcome to Steve's Fun Bag Challenge. And this week we have our newest member of yeah. staff. Yeah. I never know whether to call you Sam or Brian. Everybody seems yeah, to call you Brian, Brian but uh, um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's not really a nickname. Well, it's no, just no, surname. No, surname. <laughs> I've never been called most of the time. Well, Sam's such a long word to say, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? You know? it's too it's, old. It is. Too it is. Work. But Sam, so the rules are: you have three bags. Yeah. You have to fill them as close to two fifty grams as you can. Yeah. Every gram over or under adds on to your time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. So, um, are we ready with the the timer? We are ready with the timer. Yeah. So, on your marks, get set, go. What style is he going to go for? Is he going to ram it in or is he... Oh, no, it seems to be a considered... Oh, bag one. Oh, oh he's going for overfilling or underfilling here. <laughs> no feels idea. feels heavy. Yeah, it does. Okay, got one. So Sam works in dispatch, so whenever you get your orders, you're in my mug orders and things like that. Sam is one of the ones packing it. Yeah. Bags have just took him off bagging, so you should have any bags in there, probably I don't know, a few hundred bags. You should know <laughs> yeah. what to do by now. Sure. Do need to go <laughs> and go. No, 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 no more, no. oh more. Oh. Okay. Done. Stop the time. So what's our time there? 47. So 47 Ooh. seconds. So that gives you around about 30 grams to play with. So the first one is, oh, this isn't working. <laughs> Ed, get them out of this case. I knew oh, it wouldn't you're work. Done, it. Oh. I know how to get them out of this. It's got a protective case on it. It's 250, I think, precisely. Do you think, precisely? I think so, yeah, I, I believe so. Okay, we're going to pause and I'm going to go and get some scales at work. <laughs> things. Yeah, right, I can have a play with them now. No, me. you leave them alone. <laughs> Out of breath, running to bed. So your first bag is 275. Oh. So that's 25 grams. It doesn't give you a lot to play with there. 285. Oh. And that's not even the heaviest one. 3.30! Oh the customers are going to love me. You're trying to bankrupt me. So, I'm giving out free so I think we can safely say that you haven't beat me, no. so you still have a job. So that's a good thing. Yeah, no sack for I'm you today. Um, but yeah, on the leaderboard, we shall put up a leaderboard. And um, yeah, everybody, oh. Mr. Bryant. So I've made an AeroPress. Uh, I'm about to plunge down. Um, if you want to follow my, my AeroPress recipe, there is a link on the screen to the brew guide. Um, I always do inverted because it allows you to get a little bit of a longer time. But I also need to dilute this. So I'm just going to go over here and dilute it down. I find that high coffee amount and then dilution afterwards is much better. Um, normally I would measure it, but I'm rushing because I want you guys to be able to do it. So... Um, Let's drink the coffee. So just like those aromas I was expecting, this is very sweetness driven. Um, so going back to the snozzer in the bowl, think that kind of sweetness coming off is like, it's, it's like a green fruit kind of thing, but it's like false sweetness. It's a little bit like Starburst. I'm thinking like the lemon and the green uh, lime uh, Starburst in there. It's very juicy, very sweetness driven. Um, it is just such a fantastic coffee. I'm absolutely loving Escondida and I think it is really just one of those uh, fantastic things. As I said at the start, the book is now available to buy. Please buy my book. I don't know what to do with them all. They're everywhere. I've got loads of them. Um, Please go online uh, on Has Been or go to coffeeography.co.uk, link on the screen. Um, please buy the book. It'll make me very happy. Time to go. Thank you for watching. Thank you for joining me. Uh, and do remember, life is too short for bad books. I mean, bad coffee. Bad coffee. <laughs>
Always looking for a new mug.